Okay, this is Luminar AI. I've had a copy now for a few days and I've had a chance to play around with it. I haven't had a chance to dive right into it yet. So I'm just going to show you a few of the things that I have been doing within the last couple of days. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, this is the layout of Luminar AI. It may change slightly, as I say, this is the beta copy, but we'll see once the final version is released. But so far, you can see it is quite different from Luminar 4.3, and that's what I'd like to stress as well. This is a completely new product. It's not an upgrade from Luminar 4.3. This is Luminar AI. And it has 10 AI technologies, five from old and five from new. And the new ones include Atmosphere AI, Body AI, Iris AI, Composition AI, Depth of Field AI. And you'll get to see them with the more videos that I do and other videos that I'm sure you'll see in the internet as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just around some of the images that I have here and some that I've created in it. So I'll try and keep the video quite short and then the future videos, I'll just dive into certain sections of it as well, just to let you see that as well. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something straight away. This one was prepped for this video and I've decided I want to redo it. So I'm gonna show you how very easily it is to do it without even getting into the history. And if you can see down here in this Shutterstock image, if I click in that image and I right click in the image, I can go up to the adjustments. And if I wanted to, which we'll dive into at another point, I can copy adjustments and apply them to other images. I just want to go back to the original image. You may not see much of a change here, but you will in the video later. There we go, so that's the change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the catalog and from the catalog, you can see I've got four images here for you, two portraits and two landscapes, just to let you see how these work. So you can see the layout will be familiar to you, but also you will notice there is no address bar at the top where you would get file, edit, and everything else with that. That can now be found in here, and I've just clicked in that Luminar AI. So here we now have File, Edit, Image, View, Account, Window, and Help. And each one of these has a drop down as well, so you can see that, but I'll also cover that in different videos. I just want to show you the software working, really. That's the main thing. So first thing, I'm gonna dive straight into this image here. And I'm selecting it there from the catalog. These are added via the plus sign here. So I've just brought these in as single image edits themselves. And you can see in here, if I hover over here, it highlights. And you can see I've got four in there and I've got four in the trash that I didn't think would suit this video. So everything there is very easy to use as well. Recently edited four, which I've reset, as you just saw, the last one there being reset. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit this one here, but I'm going to jump into templates first because this is where Luminar AI comes into its own compared to other softwares. So what Luminar AI excels at, it reads the images. Uh, it's probably been run through thousands and thousands of images and thousands and thousands of processes just to say, okay, there's a portrait there. There is a person in that image. There is a light in that image as well. There is also a building in the background or part of a building. So it's reading that as it's doing it and it's then going to recommend templates for me. So I'm going to go straight into templates. And you see that jumps to full screen. Straight away, as you can see up here, it's looked at the image, scanned the image, and then went, okay, experimental. And I'll just roll my mouse here, big city lights and landscapes. And now you may wonder why it's chosen landscapes. The reason for that, or in my interpretation, the reason for that is the vibrant colours. Do you see the vibrant sky there? And then we'll go back through here, city lights the vibrant colours again of the neon, and it still knows there's a person there as well. So that's why in the first template, straight away it's went experimental. So that's a great thing. If you want a quick edit to your image, or if you are, as you know, I like to take my time with, if you've seen the rest of the channel, I like to take my time with the edits, but sometimes you're just looking for a quick fix. 
that does happen. You are still looking for a quick fix. And with this one here, I'm just going to jump very quickly into experimental. And I do realise I'm speaking quite fast. So I'll slow it down for the rest of the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose experimental. And in this experimental templates collection, it's offering me featherlight, colour ramp, glow, cold frame, celebrate and burned. And what I can do is I can cycle through these and choose the one that I want to use. So if I choose featherlight, that happens. And again, that is a quick change to that image. If you are not one of these people that likes to spend your time editing, that may be the one for you. Colour ramp. Made the model black and white, but still applied colour within that. Glow. Read what's going on in the scene, and then, okay, we need to add different effects to this, but still keep the vibrancy of the image there. Uh, cold frame. You can see the effects with that as well. Now, if I was out shooting this image, if this was one of my own images, and I'm going to cycle through this as well. For that, for example, with, with this type of overlay in it, I would normally take a CD out and put it in the middle of the lens as I was shooting the image and tilt it so that you get a reflection of the lights in this and it applies it over the top of the image. And it's a great effect, it's a great technique to use, but this now, if I don't have a CD with me, and not everyone carries CDs with them, I now know that within the templates within Luminar AI, I can get a random effect like this, and I can just go out and concentrate and shooting with the models. So, or we also have burn film. So once you get through all these, that one indeed happens to be my favourite for this image. But once you get through all these, you'll remember them. So you'll go when you're out shooting, you go, I know exactly what template I can use for this. The beauty of the templates as well though, is you can edit them. So straight away, what I can do is I can turn this down and I can lessen the effect of it. I can do that within there. I can also go into the edit panel or edit module. And you'll notice over here, we have essentials, creative, portrait, pro, what you are familiar with. But you'll also notice as well, they're highlighted. And again, if you are using Luminar 4.3 to move into Luminar AI, it's not going to take you long to get a feel for this new software. Everything's where you would expect it to be. I'm not going to go through the composition AI or anything. I'm just going to show you very quickly, relatively quick, quickly, what you can do. So you now know, because that was marked in there with the dot, that the light some adjustments have been made to the light. Within structure, some adjustments have been made to the structure. In this case, they've been lessened. Details have been added. Small details, again, lessened to soften the image. We could also, if we wanted to, go in and adjust any of these or add any more ourselves. So, for example, I will go into... I'll go into the creative side and I know that the mood has been adjusted because of the dot beside it that indicates it has been. And for this, this says Insta VCSO, VSCO Cold 4. We have an amazing drop down list in here as well. Some of them you'll be used to, some of them will be new to you. So if I change that to, I'll go for wooden here. I'll change that. And I actually like that one and I think I want to keep that, all that effect together and apply it to other images. I can go down to these three dots down here and click save. I won't do it for this video. We'll go into that in another video. And that will save that as a new template. So you can see how quickly and easily it can change the images. If I go for the before and after, there's the image there. Really strong image in its own. And then we enhance it even further. So you can see how quickly and easily that can be done. I'm also going to jump into this image here. As you know, landscapes, big love of mine. Uh, so this is a landscape image that I edited entirely in Luminar AI, just to see what it could do. And one of the new features in Luminar AI is the Atmosphere AI. And with this Atmosphere AI, you have a choice. You have Haze, Fog, Weird, Fog, Mist. And the one that I chose to go with for this image was Haze. And within that, you have the amount that's applied, the depth that's applied, and the lightness. So I can pull that back and forward. And I'm going to jump back to the depth of it. 
because what it is within the AI technology is 3D mapping. What you're seeing is a 2D image, a 3D image recorded onto a 2D sensor and brought in here as well to edit in 2D. So that's the main thing for an, an editor, a photographer. You want to bring that scene that you've captured back to life and create that 3D feel with it. And that's what this software can do, especially with the Atmosphere AI. It works really, really well. I'm going to show you the before and after of this. I'm not going to get in and edit this one again. I shot this intentionally for trying out with Luminar AI. Hence the reason there is plenty of sky. The composition is not the greatest of photos, but it lets you see how it works. So what I'm going to do is I am going to show you the before and after of this image. So you can see in here that there is a bit of depth between the background woods and this tree in the foreground. But because it's been recorded in a flat surface, as in the sense of your camera, you don't see that depth. So you need to bring that depth back. And one way using here, we didn't have haze during this or anything. You can see it's been quite a, just a blank, bleak day. But by using the software, I've changed the sky intentionally why I sh shot this to see how it worked with the sky as well. And we have actually created a slight depth in this. It's not much, but it's enough to change the look of the entire image. Yes, we dropped a sky in and I've got a video coming up in skies because I love the debate that goes on about the skies. But we've dropped a sky in as well. That is a really bland image. I'll turn that off. That's quite a bland image. There's nothing to that. There's no composition or anything. But playing around with it in here, adding a sky... The image actually changes, it takes on a different form and that really didn't take me long in here to do that. As you know, Luminar AI includes body AI and I'll just go in here and it's face AI, skin AI, body AI and high key. I'll dive into them in another video. I just want to show you one small part of this to let you see how much control you have. Straight away, I am going to get into face AI. And we have two other drop downs here. We have eyes and mouth. This model here has a slate grey eye verging on the blue. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give the model green eyes. And the reason I'm giving the model green eyes is just because of the fringing in here. And you can see the green tones coming through. So I'm going to give her green eyes for this image. So I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to choose green. You see the change straight away. I'll flick that on and off so that you can see the difference. But I want to have more control of that. So what I can do is I can go in here, and if I click this in here, this will bring up the masks. And within this, I can still see the edits I've applied. In this case, it's just green. So I'm going to apply a slight iris flare, just a very slight one. You may have seen it at the bottom, just under the eye there. And I'm also going to go for an eye enhancer. And it's just, again, for me, it's subtle. So I'll check that on and off so that you can see the difference. From this, what I can do, and I'll zoom in to show you this one, and I'm just using the wheel on my mouse for this. I'm using a Windows 10 computer, so I'll put the specs up on the screen just now so that you know exactly what Luminar AI for me is running on at the moment. I'll get back to this. We see the green eyes here and we still have the same shortcuts. I am using the square brackets on the keyboard. So those shortcuts haven't changed at all. So what I'm now going to do is I can control how much of that is applied and that is done via here. So you can see that the mask option is still there. It's all done in one layer, but the mask option is still there. And for me, I think that the green eyes, although they look great on this image, I think possibly too much. So I want to soften them slightly. So what I can do is I can go into the paint mask button and I can pull back the opacity. I'll just leave it at 55 in this case. And I'll go in and paint that in. So the original effect is applied. And we've now added a tint of green to the eyes. You will see it if I click on and off. So you'll see that added there. I could go in and do it further by adding more. But the reason I'm doing this is just to let you see how much control you have. I'll post that in. So the AI technology, I'll post that in, I'll paint that in. So the AI technology recommends and works with what you have, but you still have total control of what you do. 
That's the main thing about this. It's to speed up the process for some people. It's to allow them to visualise something perhaps they never thought of before. And I'm going to zoom back out in this. So the original image for this girl here, blue eyes. She now get green eyes. Hopefully that lets you see how quickly you can adjust your images in Luminar AI. In future videos, I'll dive in further to show you what it can actually do. But again, I would like to mention that this is the beta copy. And so therefore, a few things might change. So I don't want to dive in too far. I'll just give you a tour of certain elements within it to let you see and to allow you to prepare for when the software is released and when you get your hands on a copy. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.